G'day, fellas. This evening, we're going to be coaching John. John, tell us a little about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, uh, I'm from Canada, uh, from Quebec, so I'm a French-Canadian, as you can hear by my accent. Um, so a, a bit like you, uh, I've, mo I've moved my full-time passion uh, one year ago. Uh, I'm a full-time poker player. Wow. Okay, that's that's really <laughs> awesome because uh, I've, I've got a good friend. You might know him, uh, Don Artie. He's also a poker player. Uh, and uh, he's actually at a tournament right now. Uh, he, he sent me a message, I think it was yesterday, uh, with a big picture of the big tournament. So that's 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 awesome. That's that's great to hear. So uh, I, I haven't been in poker in a long time. I I, uh, I used to play poker back in the day, like maybe 10, 15 years ago. I used to play with like my dad and his friends. Um, but yeah, nothing ever too serious. Never went to any tournaments or, or anything like that. So uh, you're, you're full-time with that? Yeah, I'm full-time with that. I'm in, uh, I got my coaches... Uh, two high stakes player from uh, Thailand, um, and yeah, it's going pretty well. I'm playing mostly high stakes, one uh, k games. Wow. Okay. And, and yeah, it's uh, ups and downs all the time, but uh, I love it. Yeah, that, that that's I really good it. to hear. So you, you you spend your time on the side, I guess, playing Age of Empires. Exactly. I play like four hour a week of Age of Empire. Uh, I've been playing with my cousin for almost three years now. I was a Age of Empire 2 player before, but never seriously. Uh, I've watched countless videos uh, of you and uh, Samurai Revolution trying to improve my game, but seems like I'm like I cannot improve anymore. Seems right. Okay. Like I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I mostly play team games usually, uh, some one v one, but yeah, mostly uh, team games. But I guess first thing before moving to Teams games is to look at uh, like my standard opening and what I'm doing good and what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, that's definitely something. I, I guess for me, the, the question is, what do you want to get out of this? Because if you want to become a better team player, then that, that is somewhat different from becoming a better 1v1 player because the dynamic is very different between that. So I'm more than happy if you'd like to focus on team games. We can definitely do that. We can talk about a team environment and really focus oh, on team games if you'd like. Absolutely, then. It's okay. much better for me. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Well, let's start by checking out uh, your profile. So let's have a look and see what your rating is at the moment, your wins, your losses, how many games you've played in, in teams. So you can do that just by hitting your name in the top right-hand corner. That should take you uh, directly over to your profile. All right. So at the moment, so sitting about rank 3,000, rating 950. Uh, so 11 wins, 16 losses, and then in team, so 28 and 32, uh, about 1,000 rating. Okay, so not too bad at all. So definitely sitting on, on the upper side of things, I would say. Um, now, let's let's take a look at your decks. Which civilization is it that you mainly play when you're playing team games? Uh, USA. Okay, so you enjoy playing but, the USA? Yes, but I'm open to change. Like, I, I look at your matrix, and I see that USA is maybe not the best suited uh, for the most scenarios. Maybe I should be moving to British or something like that. Yeah, I, well, honestly, for team games, I think that you, the United States is actually quite strong. And that's just simply because the United States are really good in the late game, but they're not that good early on. They, they sort of take a while to get going. And with team games, you can almost always kind of get towards at least a little bit of the late game and really start to, to focus in on what, what the strengths are of the civilization. Uh, so you you mentioned that you played with your cousin earlier. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So does your cousin have a civilization that they like to play uh, or, or, or main? Yeah, he's playing Japan. 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 Okay, wonderful. Yep. This is a really, really good combo. So one of the two things I'm always thinking about whenever I'm building up a team is, is what's the dynamic going to be? Who am I going to be paired up with? So with the United States, they've got one unit that I'm sure you, you know it. It's, it's on the tip of your tongue. It's, it's the best unit. It's the state militia. You're hovering over it right now. So that is the focus. That's all you want to be making when it comes to team games where possible. Uh, you can always, you know, move into artillery, things like Culverin or uh, even even Gatling guns in the, in the early Fortress Age are, are quite fine. But I, ideally, you just want to be working on your economy and getting those state militia out. Uh, so with Japan, they're going to complement you perfectly because the Ashigaru is going to do very well in the early game at stopping any sort of cavalry on your state militia. And then once it gets into the mid game, the Yabusami are going to be able to protect your state militia really well. Okay. 
So, uh, that, that's that's an absolutely awesome combo. I'm glad to hear you've got that. So, you've the this is the deck that you're showing me at the moment. It's called Drongo. I love that name. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> is this like your standard uh, team game deck? Would you say? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it's it's been a while since I've looked at the United States. So I'm just looking at your build order here. So you're probably going to be going three Kurita Bar into the bank wagon, and then probably 700 wood, and then yeah. sort of d from there doing a bit of a flex depending on whatever it is. Uh, I always take the 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 church uh, card. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Perfect. That is that is definitely the correct play. I think. Um. Yeah. In, in team games, especially. Okay. Uh. So what I might do is I might get you just to take a couple cards out of your deck. So the first card that we're going to take out is Lee's Legion in Age 2. Uh, so it's the last one. Okay. Uh, now I just realized, I don't think I'm getting any in-game sound at, at the moment from you. I might try turning that up. All right. right, let's. We'll see how it goes. All right. And then jump into Age 2. We'll, we'll have a look at what other options we've got. The reason why I don't like Lee's Legion is because it's a really expensive card doesn't really offer you a lot and the units that it gives you well to be honest they're they're not very good i uh, never use it actually right okay uh so the the card that i'm going to suggest that you put into your deck is spice trade uh so it's on the second row about halfway along uh it's uh the one that's got yeah there there you go okay so th this card is uh it, it it synergizes really well with the politician that you're using uh, so the politician that you're using to age up is, uh, Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. I can't remember exactly which one it is. Uh, but you, you get access to the Philadelphia convention, mm -hmm. which gives you that trickle, but it also gives you access to the two big buttons, which is like the sharpshooters as well as the, um, uh, the carbine cavalry. So you can kind of use spice trade to improve your food gathering so that you can gather more food so that you can call those big buttons. That's that's one thing, but in team games, Spice Trade is quite strong, especially on larger maps. Um, so we might just jump quickly into the Fortress Age. I'll just make sure that you're not missing any other particularly strong cards. Uh, the only other thing that I think you might be missing is... Uh, oh, okay, definitely. Uh, so you're missing one key card. So what I'll get you to do is remove the five rockets from Age 4 and chuck in the team... Uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, so in, in age three, there's a team card that, that you pay. I think it's 700 coin and you get a, um, you get a town center wagon as well as bison. Yep. That's the one right there. Team Louisiana purchase. Cool. So have a look what that does. So it, it sends a covered wagon to everyone on your team. So that allows them to build a, uh, a town center. And then it also allows every town center or also makes it so that every subsequent town center spawns six bison. So if you've got three town centers, that's 18 bison. So it's incredible. It's really, really good. It synergizes very well with a spice trade because spice trade increases uh, the amount that you're gathering from those. So it's really, really, really good. Uh, and another important card that I think you're going to want to have is uh, patriotism, which is the card in between the fort and the three uh, outpost wagons. Uh, yep, uh, there you go. Yep. So this card here, so it's uh, it's going to increase the train time, or I should say, decrease uh, the train time for your state militia. So it's a really, really important card. But I guess it comes to what you'd want to take out of here. And to be honest, I I'm probably thinking the eight, um, the eight, uh, yeah, eight regulars are probably going to be the best thing to take out. Typically in team games, because you're not going to be going for like a super fast fortress, you're going to be going like, typically you're going to be aging up anywhere between say 10 minutes and 12 minutes. You're not going to need those eight regulars because you're going to have a pretty big mass as it is when you reach the third age. And if you do need something in a pinch, then you can send your Gatling guns. Okay. Cool. Uh, so now other cards that people might think about including in the deck uh, and I would advocate against include things. So next to refrigeration, uh, just to the right of it, there's a card that increases the coin gathering rate, Textile Mill. So I wouldn't recommend including this card for the United States just because you don't really gather a lot of uh, coin from estates. So that's that's quite a simple one. Uh, the other card that you could potentially add in is a fort. I don't think a fort is really that necessary uh, for the United States in team games just simply because you can already build one. Um, and the amount of land, like if you were to think about... Um, uh, I'm not sure. Do you have my stream up at the moment? Um, I right. can open it. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, I'll just do a little bit of uh, Drongo paint at the moment, but yep. like, let, let's say that you've got a, a a map like this. So in 1v1, if you've got a fort, uh, we'll put the fort in, in red, it might look like that. And then the fort has an area of influence around it. So we'll call the green uh, might be the, the area of influence. So the area of influence is maybe its range or maybe where the, the enemy feels like they can't really come into contact with it. But when you go into a team game, instead of that black circle being the map, you've now got a much larger circle in a team game. So now that fort is still got that same area of influence, but it, it's just a lot less impactful. So that's sort of why forts aren't as good in team games. So I think that um, not having the, the fort is absolutely fine in this situation. The last thing I guess that I, I would want to consider is whether you need the Chapka Ulans and the Dragoons. Uh, I, ideally, I think that you would probably only need to go with the Dragoons just simply because you're going to need something to catch raids if your ally isn't going to be catching them for you. And by that, I mean, you know, if, if you if your opponent sends a couple of Hussars into your base, you know, you've got to try and chase them down, but your opponent, um, you know, he, he's doing sort of, what, what do I say? Uh, so let's say he, he's distracting your ally and your ally's got his unit somewhere else and you're like, I'm, I'm dying to these raids you can use these Dragoons to kill those. So that that's essentially it. And what I would replace that with is the Russian-American company. So it is the first card that you see uh, on the top row. Okay. Yeah. So essentially what we're going for, and, and there's a bit of a theme here. So what I want you to do, uh, so on, on the left-hand side, just uh, hit your decks, just go to like deck number two and then go back to Drongo. Uh, and then that'll that's just going to rearrange the cards so that they're in the correct order. Okay. okay. So the theme here that we're going for is gathering food uh, in, a, in a natural state or in a natural way. And it's going to work especially well with your Japanese ally. And I'm, I'll explain to you exactly how that is. So hover over the team card that you've got in the third age. So this card here, let's say that your ally has got, you know, two town centers up and they're, they're training settlers from them. This is going to give them a third town center. And because they're Japanese, they're going to have all of their shrines out over the map. This is going to mean that you can essentially have those 18 bison. And on top of that, any of your town centers are also going to spawn bison. So ideally, you would have three town centers. This will give you a fourth town center. You'll have 24 bison. So now you've got 42 bison that you can be using and, and taking full advantage of. Now, keep in mind, have a look at all the cards that we've got in our deck to increase the gathering speed of bison. So Spice Trade, which not only increases the gathering rate of it, it also makes them last longer. So you're actually getting more food out of it. So instead of it having 500 food in it, you have got 550 food in it. Then we've got the Russian American company in the third age, which is a 30% increase in the work rate for gathered animals. And then we've got refrigeration as well in the third age, which is going to give us a further 20%. So all in all, we're stacking up 70% of bonuses from the home city. Plus we've got that extra town center as well with all that bison so you can really see the way that we're trying to synergize our cards and, you know, try and get the most value out of them that we can possibly can. Does that make so, sense? Absolutely. So I would be sending my villagers to his town center to get the bison? Correct, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. Uh, one quick question. Team game, do you use walls? Should I be walling or not? Walling is a very important part of team games. It allows you to control parts of the map. Uh, and it allows you to ignore parts of the map as well. Because if you've got a wall up in a certain area, you can ignore whatever is behind that wall. You don't care. It's not until something comes knocking on that wall do you actually have to pay it attention. And instead of it knocking you know, on your mills or knocking on your estates or your coin mines, it's knocking on that wall. So it gives you that time to react. So walls are definitely important. Um, so okay. yeah, I, I would definitely say that. And when should we start, what we should start walling? It depends on sort of the matchup and who you're playing against. So as an example, if I was playing against the Lakota, I would be walling at like the third minute. But if I was playing a pretty passive matchup, let's say I was playing against like Sweden and Dutch, I probably wouldn't even start walling until maybe like the 12, 13 minute mark, depending on on uh, exactly how much raiding is going on. But yeah, it, it's something that you can uh, really think about. You can, it, you got to take it on a case by case basis. Should we both be walling or just one guy walling the entire team? Um, to, in at top levels, both players should be walling their own respective sides. But in my opinion, the best way to, th to treat it is that 
think of your ally as like an AI that you can't control and you don't want him to get his, you know, villagers killed. So you're going to wall for him. And that that's the best okay. way I think about it. Uh, but yeah, okay. just avoid walling in too much or too close to your opponent's TC because sometimes they can be a little bit, you know, like they, they get quite aggressive. But yeah. All right. Well, I, look, I'm pretty happy with this deck. Uh, all I would really do in, in this situation is just copy this deck and call uh, call it water. <laughs> Perfect. And then just remove the four culverins out of it. And we're just going to put a frigate in, in the deck. Okay. Perfect. All right, so hit save, and yeah, we're good to go. I'm going to mute Mike, and good luck, have fun. Thank you. All right, so he's up against Portugal Dutch, so playing on Manchuria, so hopefully he's going to be picking the uh, the water deck. Uh, it's going to be important. <laughs> I was back in the day looking for the most offensive name that was possible. This is what I came up with. I like it, man. I like it. It's good. <laughs> I mean, some people would find that offensive. Some people probably enjoy it. All right, let's have a look and see what he does. So starting off, so Oops. using, um, so he, he used the two inside villages to shoot um, the uh, the units or to, sh to shoot the hunt. And ideally you want to use the ones on the end because otherwise they block. Uh, he got his villager in queue really quickly, uh, but he still hasn't moved his explorer yet. So we're at 20 seconds now. So there's like a whole bunch of things that you need to sort of do at the same time at the like when you're playing the united states it can be a little bit hard uh to sort of like get everything and to like check every box off but like still we're sitting at 30 seconds at the moment and on a map like this especially it's really important that you get your explorer out there and exploring i made a small mistake usually i go early in the i end. don't go for the hunt at the beginning oh game paused someone's okay. someone's paused yeah that's all right we're, we're watching we're just seeing. I like this. This is good. Good communication. So he, your ally can go right there. What's going on here? They're 44 seconds into the game and they're pausing already? Yeah. Guys, if you need to pause, don't start the game, mate. You know, it's a little bit cheeky, but uh, recently, if, if people have been pausing on me, I wait like 30 seconds and I say I'm unpausing in two seconds. Like, un unless they respond, because it's like... Ugh. So we can unpause? Yeah, I mean, you can just say 11. Or, or just ask him how much longer. Uh, Yeah, so you have to... Yep, yep. Okay, cool. His ally saying no. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that's. Uh, I would be very tempted to unpause her right now. Uh, how do you unpause? Uh, just hit the pause button. Uh, it should be F7, I think. Uh, we'll do it. Wait a moment. <sighs> but like, th th they just paused and didn't say anything at all. Go. Yep, just go for it. Uh, F7 does nothing. You might not have a bound. Uh, try F8. Sometimes that can work. It's for whatever reason, it's got it's bound to two different buttons F7 and F8. No. Okay. There you go. All right. Alright, he's back now. Cool. Yep. I 
All right, I'm going to mute Mike, and I'll uh, I'll talk to you shortly. See ya. All right, so he hasn't picked the water deck. That's okay. Um, so a couple things. So Explorer is still not moving. Um, so when he hit F8, I think it changed the in-game uh, game time over to frames per second, which is kind of a bit unfortunate because uh, we, we do kind of need that just to double-check metrics. We don't have a villager oh, in queue at the moment. That is my partner. Uh, that is, I think that is his partner. His partner's just red. Oh, it was. Okay. All right, he's realized. Uh, so he's got his shipment. Still hasn't trained those two villagers. Okay, so, so w the number one thing that I'm seeing right now is just like working purely on early game and getting like early game down. I did see a shift click there, so that's a good uh, sign. Also, um, using the cows is a really good sign as well. So a lot of people will ignore livestock on this map or any map that's got livestock. It's important to always bring it back. So that's one of the good things. All right. So definitely the big thing for me in in this is is going to be just focusing on on that early game macro. We can already see sort of the the consequences of it falling behind. Is is now we've got this single villager at the top that's sort of chasing this uh this big horn away. I'm gonna mute, uh, make this next song. Get out of here. All right, there we go. That's much better. All right, so going with 16, so we can just see right there, uh, there was a yellow um, boar on the screen or a yellow uh, yak on the screen. Um, so from his opponent that wasn't moved, uh, that was standing by the TP. So that's an example of, of someone who's not uh, moving their yaks. Um, so also doing a uh, herding as well when you don't really need to be herding this early. Uh, just yet ideally you want to age up and then once you've got your age up in queue then you can do your herding and you know it, it all comes down to the fact that in the in the early game that there wasn't efficient herding well this is, this is a really awkward spot uh so the awkward spot is that he is sitting on 650 food right now and needs to get up uh to 800 food but he can't do that and so now he's going to move all of his villages over here so this is something that you really want to avoid happening um, and it, it's mainly happened just as a consequence of I just had deja vu that's so weird that's really weird all right so he's, he's now got his age up in queue so we're going to watch what he does in transition okay so everybody over to queen so correct play uh, one villager on food is fine at this point as long as that villager is a herding villager I play a bit more defensive all right, that's, he's communicating well with his ally. Oh, is he going to go for a, a treasure steal? Oh, he's got this. He's totally got that. That was that was nice. That was really, really nice. He stole 75 food. All right. Okay, so he's clicking this button for Dutch immigrants, which is a correct play. So now he's going to move off. Let's let's take a look and see what he does. So he should be moving everyone over to wood at this point. He's going to need to gather up resources for um, his barracks uh, in the early game. And, you know, uh, so he's already, he's got one villager out there already. Perfect. He, he's spotted it, realized it, going to be doing herding with it. Um, ideally, he needs to be herding in another hunt, a second hunt with the United States. Typically, uh, you, you're going to be using a fair bit of food with the United States, especially when you're going up with Philadelphia, which is what he is going up with. Uh, the main issue that he's going to have is that he doesn't really have a lot of uh, a lot of wood income. I can see that he's actually saved up 150 coins, so I'm not sure exactly what build order he, he's working on, but I would suspect he might be trying to call Minutemen here. So now he's got that bank that's going down. He's got an outpost as well. Let's see what he does with the outpost. Outpost going out the front, outside a coin mine, which is a really, really good spot. So correct play from him. Uh, still, this hunt is in a little bit of an awkward place. Ideally, this hunt just north of the town center needs to be under the town center. Uh, Going to be sending 700 wood in now. So instead of opting for, you know, that, that direct play where we just go for the uh, the Pennsylvania or the Philadelphia convention straight away, just going straight for 700 wood here, which can definitely work uh, just to sort of get you get your stuff up. Uh, but now we're, we're hitting on, I would suspect, close to 58 minutes. I'm just going to... Are you able to just hit F8 on your keyboard? It's probably going to pause the game, but someone else will unpause it, I'm sure. No, it doesn't. I guess I, I removed the binding or whatever. Oh, okay. Did you want to just try and hit it, though? I, I want to just get your frame rate uh, changed.
because at the moment it's got frame rate up there uh so just change it to uh, game time so just press f f8 uh it should be twice i think did that work i it. Uh, try no. f7 twice then it goes to my old post okay weird all right um okay don't worry i'll, I'll let you keep playing sorry all right, so it's going to be hard for us to work out exact timings and when things are happening, but we're going to just be able to sort of base it on, on our judgment. So we can see a barracks getting dropped down now. I would suspect that we're probably pretty close to the six minute mark uh, with this barracks getting dropped down. Uh, actually, it does. It really creates an issue. I'm, I'm just going to let him know. Are we just able to jump into the options? So just hit the top right hand corner and then go yep. options and then go UI options. And then the first drop down that you see where it says show game time, uh, just change it to yep. show show time. Perfect. Hit apply and then back. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, we're done. All right. There we go. So we've got the time back up. So we're at seven minutes now. So we've got the fourth shipment coming in. The barracks is up and he's training units. Um, so I guess for me, the big thing here is that there's a significant delay in getting these units out. So by him having this barracks down at seven minutes and starting to make units at like seven minutes 20. He has missed out on like three batches of units. So whereas he might be on five state militia, I would be on 20 state militia. And it, it, it limits you because for the rest of the game, let's say I'm I'm now on 50 state militia or you're on 35 state militia. So it's really important to think about, you know, the consequences of delaying a barracks like that and the importance of getting it up ASAP. So that's something that we're going to talk about and really honing in on our early game here. Uh, a little bit of difficulty with herding. He's doing well with the shift clicks though. I will say that much. Starting to stack up a little bit of resources. Church is now um, finished building. So do we see him get in the uh, the upgrade for the church? So there's an upgrade that you can get. It's equivalent to a, the, the trickle of a bank. Uh, 2.5 coin a second. So ideally we'd, we'd like to see that. Now we've got the second batch of state militia now out. Third one is in, in training. So he's got those 10 militia out. So not doing too bad um, at, the, at the moment. When it comes to scores, so we can see that his... Uh, his opponent is miles ahead of his own Dutch player. I, I say that. I think he might have just put his age up in queue, though, because he was up by 2k, and now he's gone back down by 2k. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what's happened there, but we'll have to see. We'll, we'll keep watching. We'll focus on his play. Uh, so he's getting all of his market up, ups, which is good. Okay, so he has remembered to get the uh, the trickle. So really, at the moment, like, what I would be doing... So you've, you've got, like, 700 coin sitting there doing nothing. You need to be doing something with that coin. Unless you're saving up for an age up, then, you know, ideally, you should really be avoiding using, or you should avoid stacking up that coin because now it's sitting at 700 coin. So that means whether you use it at the market and buy wood with it, and with that wood, you make trading posts or you make docks, you have to do something with it though. You can't just let it sit there. Uh, it, it, now, there are different points in the game where, where you can do that. Uh, you often see games where I'm playing, especially as Sweden, I've got 35 villagers on wood and I'll, I'll get into a fight at like the 20 minute mark in the game. And after the fight's finished, we'll come back and I'll have 3000 wood sitting there. I'll be like, oh, you know, classic Drongo macro, uh, macro, macro. Um, just keep in mind at the moment, you are talking uh, in everyone. <coughs> There we go. All right, so it does look like he's actually like uh, going for some sort of age up uh, at the moment. He's stacking up a fair bit of, of food. Uh, we did talk about game plan prior to the game um, and th there wasn't really a, a mention of it, but uh, I, I think at the moment every everything is fine. I mean, we've already located, uh, you know, a, a significant amount of things that, that can be done to improve. Uh, and I like the fact that he's uh, he's researching everything. He's actually doing really well on idols as well. Uh, he's once again fallen short of that threshold that he needs to age up. Just slightly. Just slightly. Just uh, slightly, rather. Alright, so going now with the age up. Yeah, it was not my, my best start ever, for sure. Yeah, that's okay. We've got plenty to talk about, so I'm, I'm not too fussed. Oh, 
All right, so I, I guess we can move into a bit more active coaching now because I've definitely identified what we need to do in the early early game for you. So we'll talk about what we're going to do in the mid game. Um, so okay. when you hit... Uh, so at the moment, what you need to be doing is, you know, continuing to mass your state militia, but you need to be preparing yourself for the third age where you're going to be going big boom city. That's, that's typical in team games. Have a look at your opponent and see what units they've got massed up at the moment. Oh, so, sorry, not your but, opponent, uh, your your ally. I apologize. So they've got skirmishes yeah. at the moment. So a little bit dangerous uh, to sort of be going both double skirm. Uh, so it means that you yep. might have to have to ship dragoons uh, from the home city. That's one thing to think about. Uh, but at this point in time, you just keep making your state militia. He's asking for walls. This is going to be this yep. is going to be a long game. <laughs> <laughs> So just keep making your state militia militia at this time. Okay. Um, I, I don't think you need to wall up just yet. I, I think you can probably leave it. Um, oh. So you can see your opponent's army there. So you just continue making the the state militia. Yeah, I think you've got yeah you got the two raxes now. Yeah. So once you age up, your shipments are going to be the uh, the team covered wagon. Okay. Um, and then you'll, you'll ship your factory after that. So you're about to age up now. Yep. So the... Yep, there it is. Oh, it's 750. Okay, so you yep. need about 20 coin. Uh, so drop down a second town center as well. So you can use eight villagers for that. Eight villagers for that, okay. Yep. So ideally you want to do that on, on resources. Uh, so in, instead of doing it, that, that's okay. You can keep that one there, but just for the, the next one that goes up, uh, you want to be putting it on on some sort of resource that you don't already have secure yet. Okay. All right. So your shipment is about to come in. Um, can we have a look at your market upgrades? Uh, yeah, grab steel traps. Perfect. All right. So now with your covered wagon that you've just got, so you can just go chuck it over near a coin mine or near some wood, something like that. Great. Uh, perfect. Uh, now keep making villages at this point, and at the same time, at the same time, training your state militia. Now you're going to want to get a the upgrade for your state militia um, to have their uh, veterancy eventually. Uh, so probably a good idea to do that sooner rather than later. Your opponent is starting to make Reuters now, so that's a good sign. My opponents are what? Oh, sorry, your ally. Sorry, I, I keep saying okay. your opponent. All right, so you've got your three town centers up. Are they all making uh, villages at the moment? Two are. There it is. Okay, so next upgrade, what would be? Uh, I'd probably go something like um, the long rifles for your state militia. It's a really, really strong card. And have you got that upgrade in yet for your state militia, the veterancy? I think you've got that in now, don't you? Yes. Perfect. All right, so your opponents are, are booming quite well. I wonder if they're on the water, but uh, I guess we'll, we'll never know until the end of the game at least. <laughs> Uh, so you can also get the upgrades from the market for your wood chopping as well. You got plenty of uh, yeah, resources for it. Yeah, just keep focusing on villager production. Keep making state militia at the moment. Uh, you can actually drop down a fourth town center as well, which is definitely advisable. The more town centers you drop down, the better. Uh, I did so not even know that we can have four with the USA. Yeah, well, you can have three, but then you get that card that increases the town center limit by one. Oh, okay. So you can actually just buy up a whole bunch of wood right now with your coin and then just drop a, another town center somewhere. 
So you, you don't have to drop it super far away. You can just drop it somewhere somewhere close. But yeah, ideally you'd want to use eight villagers for it instead of just one. Jeez, this guy's really bunkering down, isn't he? He's got his uh, the Bastion walls yeah. upgraded now. All right, so keep training those villagers. Making sure every town center's got uh, got plenty of, uh, of villagers in, in queue. Uh, you can also buy more wood as well, because you, yeah, you, oh, that, that works as well. Right, maybe you should ask your ally if, if you want to push now, because maybe your opponents are just booming. Okay, then would you go with this card? Yeah, Continent of Rangers. Ranger. Yeah, would be perfect here. So yeah, with your villagers, definitely probably put them on, on wood, yeah. You've got a, a, quite an excess of food at the moment, so I'd, I'd start to focus more on, on wood as well. Uh, I can actually see some units down to the south of his base, so you might want to go help him out. Don't forget to train your villagers in queue while you go and push. So you gotta just be real careful of those falconets, yeah? Because those falconets yep. are gonna dumpster you if you're not careful. Alright, be careful those Sasars. Maybe you want to move back right here? Yeah, just move back. Keep training units as well, don't forget to do that. Maybe put down... Do you have the option to put down your flag here as well? So your state militia are actually doing a really good job, but you're going to need to deal with these yeah. falconets. So it might be a good idea to drop an artillery foundry uh, and, and train some culverin. Alternatively, you can just brute force them like that. That works as well. So you might want to buy some wood here and drop down a couple more barracks. Closer to the fight? Uh, it can be towards the front of your base. It doesn't have to be super duper close to the fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So you actually held on really, really well there. We can just see the, the true power of the state militia there. You know, despite your opponent having a significantly larger army, you're able to push them back. So impressive stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so your artillery foundry should be up and running very shortly, so when it is, um, maybe just get some culverin out. I think yours is that one there at the... F yeah, there you go. So you got two shipments now. So you can send in uh, a couple of, of different options. Um, I think probably at this point you'd want to go something like Refrigeration and Patriotism. Alright, make sure you keep training villages as well. So you're training out of all four town centers, yeah? Yes. Good stuff. All right, so that's more than enough houses. You've you've got 150 population at the moment, uh, so you only need five houses. All right, you can probably push at this point. 
it, it's really just going to come down to um you know your you've got to deal with their artillery with your culverin and not let your culverin die that's essentially it all right yeah you can keep pushing up now All right, your calves have Alec yep. found their targets. Nice, go for that next one. Perfect. Okay, so spam Q or, or spam. You want to get them to pack back up. How do you do that? Do uh, that. You got to hit that button on the on your um, down in the bottom right hand corner, the fire button. Yeah, you hit that button. Okay. Yep. Nice. You're just absolutely destroying that. Look at that. That is it's so important. Uh, but like you, you've you've completely yeah. nullified his entire army, uh, j just by doing that. Uh, even if you lose your your calves here, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, you just got to make sure that you're training more calves. Perfect. All right, so your allies now reach the fourth age, so that's a great sign. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Nice. You're doing really, really well. I love this. This is great. You just you can just stand and fight this now. Alright, so you got a, a whole bunch of idols, so maybe we can attend to the idols in the meantime. If you have to move to mills, that's okay. Don't don't feel afraid to do that. You don't have a lot of map control here. Maybe go back and check on our army now. Oh, that's a lot of Falks. So one of the tricks you can do, instead of just right-clicking on it, right-click behind the Falconat and move up. So, yep, behind it, yep. And now right-click the Falconat. There you what go. What does that do? So it moves everybody up at the same time so that they can fire. In instead of... Because otherwise they're going to be like creating this kind of circle around the enemy units. Okay. But by doing that, you just kind of move everyone into range and then just kill them immediately. All right, so you got a few idle villages at the moment. You can create, uh, yeah, you can get them on, on mills or chuck them on coin mines or something like that. Maybe even buy a little bit of wood or something and, uh, and get them on, on over to mills. Very nice. Yeah, you guys have got this. I think this this might be GG. You guys are pulling ahead significantly at the moment. Uh, scores are looking really good for you guys. So don't forget your mill upgrades as well. Okay. Nice. I love that you got you've got the mortars out now. This is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's so so good. Hazard, don't you worry, baby. I'll talk dirty to you after we finish the stream. Alright? <laughs> Sorry. I there's just... no more wood. Yeah, th there's not. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to start to push up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is this is really really nice. You you got them on the ropes at the moment. So 
So you're sitting on 86 villagers at the moment, which is pretty darn good, I would say. I think that most people around your skill level probably wouldn't get up to villager numbers that high in a game like this, typically. Yeah, usually I do one or two town center, not four. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you might want to age up to the fourth age now. Uh, normally the best age up is, uh, I think it's South Carolina in teammates. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the left one. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, keep pushing up now. Uh, you got some mortars, you got Gatling guns, you got everything. All right, just keep pushing up. You're, you're doing really good. Uh, so, have you got your last mill upgrade as well from the uh, from the mills? Don't think so. There you go, perfect. All right, so keep moving everything up. Um, if you want to hit, uh, go to your mortars and get them into um, into limber mode because at the moment they're all some of them are in bombard mode. Ah, uh, you want the other one? Yeah. There you go. Makes it much faster for them. So they, they move faster, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they have to pick up and, and put themselves down. So there's some... You just saw some falconets? Yeah. Nice. Oh my god, that line of sight is so good. Oh. Oh, those balls are almost... You almost got a collateral there on that organ gun. All right, watch out with your calves. Nice. Well, calves are a little bit, uh, getting a little bit spicy up there. Calves firing blanks, I saw it. All right, so don't be afraid to upgrade your units and continue making more. Yeah, there you go. That's the big one. That's the money item right there. Look at the, the way he's got his banks. It's so cute. I love it. <laughs> Look, I, I'll be honest. I was worried when they were pushing in to your base at the beginning of the game. Or to, to your allies' okay. base. Yeah. But you held really impressively. Uh, I genuinely thought you were going to lose the game right there. I was like, those Falconets, you guys don't have any answer for that. That's just going to be GG. But nope. You guys... You guys stomped him. Oh, I can't believe that guy microed his calf. I didn't think that was going to happen just then. I'm curious why these guys haven't called GG yet. There we go. One's out. That's the Dutch player. He's out. You can say GG in the chat oh. now. There you GG. go. GG. Well played, man. Seriously. Woo! That was really, really nice, dude. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, but uh, yeah, I made a couple of mistakes at the beginning. Uh, yeah, and then you, you basically told me what to do during the fight. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to like a, a little bit of game knowledge and experience and that sort of stuff. Uh, but uh, I mean, overall, you, you played it really, really well. Let's take a look at the post game. I want to see the village account. Uh, game summary timeline? Yeah, timeline, and they got a village account. Have a look at your village account. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's us, yeah. That's you, right there. So, like, you're miles ahead of them, and that's exactly it. If you can do that every single game, you you, you, you will go up, like, 200 ELO just from doing that alone. Like, you're going to be so much more ahead of your opponents just by doing that. Um, and like e even there, you're not even at max villages. You very easily could have been, but you had so much, so much military. So really, and really impressive. Um, all right. The so bison, the bison were really good, also. Yeah, yeah. The bison's they they help you out a lot when you kind of like yes. you're you're in a difficult spot and you don't know uh, what what's the word like you're in this weird point where you don't have enough food to get out on the map 
and it kind of lets your town centers it gives them enough food income to keep making villages until you can sort of overcome it all right so what we're going to do we're going to hit the quit button in the top left hand corner and we're going to head into a skirmish game or act actually what we can do um what we might do is uh, just load up the replay for that one uh so if you just hit load yep and then just go recorded games uh, so it should just be uh, the ver uh, the second one, I think. This one just there. Yep. yep. All right. So just pause it when it begins. It's not the good one. All right. So what you're going to do in the top right hand corner, just click the two buttons. Uh, so underneath that. So you want to hit um, over on the right hand side. Just hit the lock. Okay, and now you're just going to hit the arrows until you get to you. Uh, so, yep, those ones. Okay. Yep, and one more. Perfect. All right, so okay. now just move up on the minimap. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do now, have you got a copy of the improvement checklist? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you able to bring that one up now? Uh, it's on my phone, so... I, I, I can bring one up now and we can, we can sort of go through it. It's okay. It, it, it's, uh, I, I can do it yep. so that I've got it on stream. Yep, because it's on my phone. So. All right. So I've got the improvement checklist up now. Um, so we're going to run through that and I'm, I'm just going to sort of talk about the basics, uh, at, at the, at the very beginning on what I would expect to see, uh, from, uh, a, a player. Uh, so just before we start, so the very first thing is I begin training my first villager within 10 seconds of the game starting. So let's take a look and see if you did that. Perfect. So you can pause it now. All right. So we'll check that one off. That, that was perfect. Uh, the next one is I use hotkeys to select my town center and to train villagers. Now, I noticed uh, throughout the game, I was asking you, can you, or are you training villagers? You were hitting hotkeys and you were training villagers. Is that right? You were doing that? Yes, but to train them, I, so I have a hotkey for the town center, but I need to, to click it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you half a pass for that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now the next one, it's, it's, I avoid having an idle town center before having enough villagers to age up. Uh, the other one that I want to talk about, uh, I mean, there's a couple of, of them in here. Uh, so that that's one. I want you to think about that one. The next one is, um, I maintain an appropriate amount of animal carcasses on the ground. And the other one of that, or the, the last one, is I understand the concept of an efficient scouting path. All right, so let's oh. play the game. We'll, we'll talk about just a little bit. So one of the so things... Usually I, I don't... Yeah, usually I don't kill I don't kill the animal right away. I go I get the crates, and then I go to wood, and then I go kill the animals. Right. Okay. Um, so one of the things to do is make sure that you get your explorer on the move ASAP as well. So yeah, explorer is hanging out. We're at twenty eight seconds now, thirty seconds. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Nicodemus, I think it's exclamation mark improvement. Give that one a try. Um, so the Explorer, obviously we're at 40 seconds now. It still hasn't moved. Um, one of the things that, that sort of happens as well, um, in this game is that, um, your hunt gets out of control. So you're, you're doing a really good job of hurting it here. And, and like at, at this point, in my opinion, you've played it perfectly with the exception of like your Explorer. I think everything that you've done. Uh, is good. There's there's some smaller things as well uh, that you could be working on, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm not going to get bogged down in that. Uh, for me, at the moment, the beginning is really getting that explorer out there, and then yes. so so now you've moved out. Uh, so you can fast forward it just a little bit from here. Okay. So what happens here? Um, is uh, the checklist, the, the item that I marked is I maintain an appropriate amount of animal carcasses on the ground. Now, this is one of those things that it's, it can be a little bit hard to determine. But at this point, you can see that you've got seven villages that are all gathering 
uh, from the same carcass. These guys are going to go through this really quickly. And if you pause the game, uh, you can actually see. So you've got like you've got this one uh, Marco Polo sheep that is right next to them. And then you've got the other Marco Polo sheeps over to the right of the town center. They're moving away from the town center. So what's going to happen if these villagers shoot this Marco Polo sheep that's closest to them? These Marco Polo sheeps are going to run away even further from the town center. So what you need to happen is you need to shoot this Marco Polo sheep with your single villager that's sitting out there. Does that make sense? That way. Yes. What? Yeah. What? What I was doing before was uh, I was uh, mainly playing on the uh, Great Plains, so I would killing the four bison right away. So would it be good to kill all the animals? And right not next to the not door? right away, but you know you can definitely within the first two to three minutes. Yeah, I think that that's absolutely fine. A uh, fine. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you can unpause it here. All right, so uh, you, you sent in your shipment a little bit late as well, but that's okay. Um, and your town center went idle as well. So your town center was idle for quite some time. Uh, so let's because watch. I don't have enough resources. Yeah, so have a look where your bison, or have a look where the bighorns are going. So you can see that they're running towards the back there. Uh, they're still in a relatively okay spot, but the issue that you're going to have, so if you fast forward it just from here. So you can see right there. So because uh, because the uh, the big horn wasn't dead on the ground for it to run to, it, it just went and shot off the sheep. So okay. what we're going to do, so we'll quit out of this now. Quit? Yep. Yep. All right. And so head into a skirmish game. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep practicing the very beginning over and over and over again. So if, if there's a, a map specifically that you like, say Great Plains is a good example, then you can set the map to Great Plains. And what you're going to do is you're just going to keep going over the same, the start, like the first two minutes really for the United States is fine until you can get it perfectly and be able to achieve that every single game because that's going to help you and, and speed it up even more. So if you want to set the map to Great Plains, we'll go ahead and do that. Now we can just do that against the AI. It's not a big deal. All right. All right. So just um, go for it. I I'll, I'll just watch and we'll see what happens. So really good opening so far. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, probably the first thing you should do with your, your villager out of the town center is you want it to start herding. Yeah, or you can just use that one. It's fine as well. You got to be really careful when you shift click though. Uh, but it looks like you managed to pull that one off. So now you're coming in on that 200. Perfect. Oh, nailed it. So you could have shot the female bison. So there was a female bison that was quite close to the town center. Yeah, you can just, instead of moving your, uh, your explorer all the way out to do it. Okay, so you see how you went idle just for a, a short amount of time? It was probably about like maybe five or six seconds. Yes. So you can actually avoid doing that and you can do it uh, from um, j just from having better control in the early game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to restart it. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can nail that perfect control for the early game. So pause the game as soon as you get into it.
Okay, yep. so the very first thing that you're going to do is you're just going to move all of the villagers. So mm -hmm. you'll select all of the villagers and you're going to move them to the furthest away crate. Okay, yeah, food crate, correct, that one there. And then as they're walking there, you're going to try and pick off the last two or three villagers and move them to the closest food crate. That one right there. Okay. So that's the first thing that you're going to do. So we're not even going to, don't even think about the explorer. We're just going to focus on early game macro right here and try and nail this down. All right, so that's what I want you to do. Yep, and straight away queue the villager. Yep, queue, 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 queue. All right, pause now, pause it. Okay, perfect. You nailed that 100%. So now we move into the second phase, which is the resource gathering phase. So you want to minimize the amount of walking distance that your villagers are doing. So you need them to get on wood. So what you want to do is pull off about four villagers here and get them all over onto the trees. So not onto the wood crates, onto the actual trees themselves. Okay? Oh, okay. Perfect. So you don't need to micro those two villagers. They will do it all themselves. So you're going to shift click your villagers here. So shift click. Uh, so the, the lady, shift click her onto the wood crate. So you're going to shift click the lady yep. onto the wood crate and then onto the tree. And then you're going to shift click the man onto the wood crate and then onto the XP crate and then onto the tree that's closest to him. Okay. Oh. That's all right. And now with your town center, you're going to use it to get the uh, bison uh, coming in closer. Perfect. Yep. Wonderful. Oh. That's all right. That's okay. And now you're going to route your town center directly to that bison. Can you pa pause the game for me just for a second? Hit options. Go down to hotkeys. Uh, oh, oh, you're using legacy hotkeys. Okay, interesting. Um, do you always use legacy hotkeys? Yeah, I just set them up like this and that's what I use. Have you tried the default hotkeys or not? Uh, I don't like the default hotkeys, hot keys, but uh, I could change some. I, I would always add. I would advocate for using it, but if you're not comfortable, that's okay. Uh, do you have a hotkey set up for ungarrisoning ungarrisoning yes. villages in your town center? Yes. You do have a hotkey yes. for it. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Don't worry. So we can head out of the, out of this now. All right. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take them. Go in town center. Get you, up. Yes, but you're gonna do it slowly. You're gonna trickle them. So as you hit like 190 wood, then you're gonna take three of the villagers and put them in the town center, and then move them over to the bison. Yep, there you go. And then perfect. And then selecting the last three, and then doing the same thing with them. And then the one more over to the right. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then you're going to shoot in that, uh, the, the bison that's closest to your town center, you're just going to shoot it with three villagers that are sitting down on the bison at the moment. And then what you're going to do is immediately go back to the same bison. So you're just going to shoot and then turn around. Yep, shoot, turn around. Perfect. There you go. That's it. And now, so keep going. And now you're spamming Q with your town center or your villager and pause. Pause. So... We just got you, remember before, where there was like that six second period where there was idle time for your town center. Yep. You didn't have that here because you were able to effectively macro and you don't have that idle time anymore because you've been able to gather with that extra APM that you've invested an extra, what, 60, 70 food because of that? It's a huge amount of resources. So it's really important, even though people often think like, oh, Drongo, you're crazy paying, you know, that much attention to the early game. This is the difference that it makes. Right now, you've gathered an extra 60, 70 food. You haven't gone idle at your town center. It's been perfect. It's a, it takes a little bit more effort, but the result is huge. So uh, at this point, so you can send, yeah, s split off some villagers uh, over onto the onto the bison. So you've got that little uh, marker above the heads of the bison as well. 
Uh, so you, you can move them across over to the bison. So one of the things to do as well, when you're uh, when your villagers take shots at a bison, yeah. what you want to do is move them away immediately. So you, you shoot and then you move them immediately because they've got this animation. They shoot, they stand, they put their gun away, and then they start walking. So okay, uh, it's a small it. thing. It's, uh, it like works out to be an extra two seconds or so. But right now, if you were to, you know... Uh, you know, shoot this bison here. What what I would actually do in, instead of shooting it, uh, so d don't shoot it, don't kill it. Oh, never mind. Oh. It's all right. Uh, I was gonna yeah, say I'm you can just pop you can just pop three villagers in the town center and just kill it. That's okay. You just you just do your thing. So then you shoot it and you move it right away. Yeah. So you shoot it and then you move the villager just to the the side of the the bison. So uh, oh, okay. Uh, just grab one of the kuras and head down to the south. Uh, yeah, just down, down to this herd, and I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So what you're going to do is you're going to shoot it, and then you're going to follow the bison in the same area immediately. So, yep, you shoot, and then you right-click. Yeah, there you go. So it's like animation cancelling, essentially. And it allows you, instead of your villager standing still and just looking at it, you're cancelling that animation. You're saying, no, get over there right now. Start gathering those resources for me. Ah, oh, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so look, I I'm really happy with how that went. I'm going to get you to do it one more time. Try and put everything that we've we've just talked about. I I'm not going to say anything or do anything. You might you might make a few mistakes. That's okay. But just tr try and harness that and, and try and do that and really try and nail down the early game here uh, with everything. If you need to pause, go for it. Uh, so that's okay. All right, I'll, I'll get you to pause right now. Do you, do you see the error that you made? Nope. You gathered your XP crate instead of your food crate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, I did not see it. That's All right, start. that's okay. <laughs> I see that we've got 50 raiders coming in from Toet Mind. Toet Mind, I don't recognize your name, uh, but uh, welcome. Welcome, fellas. We're doing a uh, a little bit of a uh, a bit of a coaching session at the moment, so hope you guys are uh, interested in seeing some coaching. At the moment, we're coaching John; he's doing quite well. He's nailing it, guys. Look at this. He's actually nailing it. Like, he literally picked up everything immediately. He hasn't made a single mistake yet. Oh, my God. He actually... And he's using his Explorer as well. Like... No idols right now? Uh-oh. Okay. That's the mistake. He didn't hurt. So now he's got... Ah, he knows, he knows. <laughs> okay, so he left his herding until too late. And as a result, his bison herd got too far away. And now, you watch, he's going to get, he will go idle 100%. Because that, that's the metric that we're using, is whether he idles on this villager here that's coming up. And he almost 100% should be idling on this villager. Uh, I don't think there's any way he's going to be able to get it out. Uh, so we can see he was using the trick there, but using it in the wrong direction and shooting his bison even further away. Uh, and so... I'm suspecting he's going to be idle 100% here. We go back out. Uh, I can't... The village is already on the bison, so definitely idle. All right. All right. I'll let you have a restart. Uh, I'm sure you saw what, what went wrong there. Uh, not sure. Uh, I'll let you... I'm really not sure. You forgot uh, to herd. So you got to herd. Normally, I like to herd with the very first villager out of my town center when I'm playing the United States. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. So the first one that gets out is the one that I'm gonna use to herd. Uh, yeah, the, the first one that you make out of the out of the town center. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Toe at mind. Great to hear, mate. Uh, welcome, welcome to the community, mate. It's uh, it's really cool to hear. Uh, I'll I'll have to. I'm gonna chuck a follow on you. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check you out. Uh, let me let me give you a follow. There we go. All right. Let's watch. Let's see. How does John do? Starting off really perfectly again. Gets the villager in queue straight away. Alright. I want to see him move. He needs to move a couple more villagers over onto wood straight away. 
the, these, yeah, because the longer that they're walking around, the less they're doing. Okay, that's fine. Bison have already started moving away. Classic bison. Perfect. So he needs to chuck down his house. This is, this is actually a really good position right here. So house going down. And villagers going through. He's perfect. Oh my god, he did so well. And the last... Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Alright. Perfect. Oh, wrong one. Wrong one. Probably should have gone for the other side. That's okay, though. Oh. Does he get? Does he put the villager in queue? He didn't put the villager in queue before he went to the home city. He's gonna be... He's gonna be idle. He's idle. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm really happy with with honestly how fast you pick this up. I I think that I've given you the two the tools just here to be able to sort of master the early game and everything that you need uh to to sort of get a, a significant head start. Like just this, like with you being able to master this and get this down and learn and being able to put into place the next thing that I'm about to teach you, I would genuinely be surprised if your rating was, you know, not increased by, say, two, three hundred team rating within, like, the next day or two. Like, that, that's the kind of difference that it makes. Um, so the next thing I want to talk to you about, um, I, I think we can... It's probably best that we do it on, on my stream. So I'll just get you to watch my stream, and then we can actually talk about it from there. Uh, so... On Twitch? Or yeah, yeah. Or yeah, just on Twitch is fine. Uh, so, I'm going to just bring up the VOD from today. So, one of the big things when it comes to... Uh, when, it, when it comes to... Sort of getting to the higher level of play, it really comes down to the concept of tempo. And tempo is this idea of how effectively you can build up momentum. So One second, I need to find you. Alright, oh, I might. I'll close down your stream. Yeah, and I'm gonna turn up the volume here. Okay. All right, guys, we're just waiting. I can see Arvark in the chat saying this macro. Ah, oh, Arvark's enjoying it. He's taking notes. I can tell. All right, so. The one thing that is is so significant is, is this concept of tempo, and and tempo. I mean, the best way for me to try and like explain it is kind of like a wave. Uh, so if, if we get like a, a, a wave, exactly like what does it look like? It's it would kind of be like like that um, would be the best way for me to draw it. And the problem is, the earlier you can get this wave rolling, the better for you as a player. So let's say that like this is your age up time right here. This is your age up time here. Okay, and or, or actually we'll say this this is where you start building units. Let's say that. So if you were to look at like, you know, Kenisi, one of the best players in the game, his is gonna be like really, really close to after like at, at the beginning of the game. But if we were to look in the game that you played, where yours would be in relation to Kinesi's, we would expect that. Uh, hold on, let me just copy and paste that. There we go. I would expect that yours would be a, a lot further along. And what that means is that Kinesi, the whole time, would be making units on on this, I guess we, we'd say on, on this line here, or we'll delete that, whereas you're on, on this line down here. And so what that might mean, what, what that actually translates over to is a significant difference in the amount of units because let's say that you know it, let's say it's a united states um mirror and are, are you talking about uh, villagers or no no it's military, units, military or units okay so let's call this like five state militia all right so five state militia and then uh we'll make that 10. is there and then 15 uh we'll make it up here 
Oh my gosh, I don't know why my font is so small. Uh, and then, so we, we make 15 up here. And so essentially, the, the point is that when you've got five state militia, Kinesi is working towards his 15 state militia up here. And what I mean by that is, so if we take a look at from your perspective, okay, so you've aged up, we're, we're just going to assume that you age up at a relatively uh, competitive time. But let's actually take a look how long it takes for you to get your barracks down. The moment you get your barracks down is the moment that you begin creating units. It's the moment that your tempo begins. Because every time that you're creating, you know, five units out of that, you're five units ahead of your opponent. And all of a sudden, if you create 10 units and your opponent hasn't created any, well, now you're 10 units ahead of your opponent. So here, you've just aged up. You've got your bank down. You put the outpost down. You're seven in, sending in your 700 wood and you've dropped down a house. You still don't have a barracks up at this time. We can't actually tell what the in-game time is uh, we, we can't tell exactly uh, what the in-game yeah. time is because we've, we've got the FPS up there uh, in the top. I, I'm just trying to sort of move us along ever so slightly. Uh, but I think it's about seven minutes that you drop. So there's the barracks going down right there. Uh, and, and so you've dropped it down before you even pick up your 700 wood. Uh, you, you managed to chop it. So essentially the point that I'm making is that you need to get down your barracks immediately. So one of the things that you did so if I head over, I might start up Age of Empires and then I can just demonstrate it to you that way. Um, is that you you put down your um, your bank or, or like you, you got the coin for your bank, but what you needed to do is you needed to immediately switch all of your villagers over to wood so that you could get... Um, so, so that you could get that barracks down. Once that barracks is down, then you can begin... Uh, you know, training military units and getting your tempo going because that's going to buy you time. Whether you want to go raid with that, whether you want to defend yourself with those ra raids, like, it, it, that's really what it comes down to, just having those units out a lot earlier. Uh, so if we go into a skirmish game right now. Okay, so I, I gather the coins for the bank and once I gather the three... So you... Oh, I don't have the United States on this account, sorry. How come I don't have... I, I thought I had the United States on this account. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, so you go 350 for the for the coin for the bank. Do you gather 150 more for the... Uh, no. The messenger? No, oh, We no. don't care about those. Okay. No. Then I take all of the guys that were gathering coin and I ship all of them on wood. Correct. Until I have 200 for the, for the barrack. Correct. Okay. And then from there, you can choose whether you want to send 700 wood. Normally, that's your best bet. And then uh, you're going to be focusing on food because you've got your bank up, which is going to be giving you coin. And then, you know, you, you focus on food as well as wood. And you're, you're going to need to add a house eventually as well. So maybe keeping like five or six villages on a house as well, or on, on wood, and then the rest on food. But you can start off, even in team games, just going with regulars. Building regulars is okay in, in the early game. That is absolutely not a problem. So don't be afraid to transition from regulars into state militia. That is something that, that is acceptable. Okay. And and it gives me anti-cav at the beginning. Ex exactly. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you don't have to use it against skirmishers. You can just save it for when that cavalry comes in and then, yeah, fights against you. But look, I, I, I think that just being able to master those tools and then going through uh, the checklist, the, the checklist that I, I talked about earlier, is really going to enable you to sort of elevate your game. Uh, honestly, I'm really impressed with how fast you picked that up. Like, it, it, it was so amazing to for me to be able to tell you all of that stuff. And literally the next game, like the next time you you jumped in, you did everything. It was so cool to watch. Like, you didn't you didn't skip a beat. It was absolutely perfect. So, yeah, I'm, I'm confident that, like, you could very easily uh, see a, a great improvement in your skill just by mastering the early game like that. What I might do is I'm just going to grab up the um, the improvement when you checklist. All, when you want to move your military units, do you click the, the button uh, that moves all of them? Or this is not something you use? Uh, I do sometimes use it when I revolt. Other than that, I use hotkeys in control groups. Okay, I, I like I, this is what I always use. So what kind of hotkeys you, you use? I have one of key for uh, artillery, one for infantry, and one for cavalry. Yeah, I'll show you the hotkeys that I use because I've, I've got a very specific setup. It can depend as well on my unit compositions, so it gets a little bit complex. Each player is different, so I'll show you. Uh, so we'll go... Uh, if you're watching stream, you should be able to see. Yep. Um, 
All right, so we'll just start by. You're cheating. I am cheating. Nice. Right, so this is like your typical unit composition that you've got here. So it's it's a three unit composition. So you've got your Abus guns, which could be in your case state militia. You've got your Janissaries, which are your anti-cavalry unit or your musketeer unit. Uh, so that that would be like your regulars or your pikemen, and then you've got hussars, which are your flanking unit. Uh, and, and that, that's the way that I would do it. Uh, so I've got in control group one, I've got my Abus. Control group two, uh, and, and very closely behind them, I've got my anti-cavalry. And then in control group three, I've got my Hussars. Now this can get complicated when you go to the third age and you start mixing in falconets and, and culverin, which need to be microed individually as well. Um, so as an example, when I'm playing the Swedes and I've got Corollians and Falconets, Falconets are control two, Corollians are control one. So it, it depends on the composition that you're you're playing, um, but that's the way that I do it. And then Culverins are control three. Um, so to make your group, so you, you select them, you... Like you double click when you need, you select them all, you, you hit control one, control two, control three each time. My problem is if I get, let's say my Janissaires to, to the fight, they die, then my groups are all fucked up. And if I bring new units, it's like you need to redo the groups all the time, right? Okay, so th there's a way around it. So I've, I've got a, a hotkey, I've got two hotkeys. They're really, really important hotkeys that I've got macroed to my mouse. That's how important they are. So the first one is the find all of the same type unit. So it is under find units. Now yep. I, I use the default hotkeys. So it is here, find all of selected type. I've got it as mouse five down. Uh, on my other one, I've got uh, delete is, is my other one, but that, that's the most important one. So essentially what happens is like, let's say I've, I've got my fight going on here. I've got my falconets and I'm, I'm training more Janissaries at home. Uh, let me train a few more. So what I will do is I, I, I will select my control one group here and then I will hit the select all button and then I will call that control one. So now when I press one, it includes those guys. So I'm making sure that I hit select all and then calling it control one again. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So th th that's the way that I've been doing it. Uh, it, it seems to work. It can, it can be a little bit finicky though. So as an example, like I'll, I'll show you like one of the things that really annoys me and like th this happens all the time and I, I complain about this just like because I'm bad at the game really um, because you can avoid doing it. It's just something that uh, you, know, you, you have to be very cognizant of. So like let's say the these are your reinforcing troops. They're coming from your barracks and you're down here on the front. Maybe you're fighting um, ag against an opponent down here on the front line. You might be like attack moving or something like that. Maybe, you know, you, like that. So what happens is it, you put, you get your reinforcements. So this is control one. You've got these guys coming down. You put them into the same group and then you move them. Do you see how slow these guys here at the front move when these guys try and catch up with them? So because these guys are in the same group as these ones and you're giving them all the same command to move here, look how slow these guys go. I'm not sure if you can see, but they're going really... Yeah, yes. So uh, I, I essentially always complain because uh, I, I want the game to treat them as two separate groups, but it doesn't. It, it's, it's complex, but essentially it's, it's one of those things that you've got to be careful of because ideally when you're down here fighting, you want your units to be moving at full speed and you want these guys to be coming in as well, but not at the, not at the loss of speed on these guys here. It's really important to maintain that. And so if you do group them up, you can see that speed reduction once again coming in. You've got to be careful of that. So it's, it's one of those minor things. Um, and uh, there, there can be a few Amen. bugs with the way that it works, but uh, as far as I intend, it's intended behavior, but overall, I think that it's a reasonable way to do your control groups. Other than that, I, I use control five for all of my town centers. So if, if I want to train villagers, I know, I know that I'm playing the Ottomans at the moment, um, but I, I would have all of them uh, selected on control five. So you can see it selects all three town centers for me right now. Uh, that way I can just go Q, 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 Q and, and train villagers immediately. Um, okay, so I don't, I never select all the town center at the same time. My, so my hotkey for town center is F1, 
So when I press F1, I get to one tenth and turn, and I need to push it again to get to the next one, and again to the next one. That's still fine. So, I think that that's okay as long as you've got a hotkey for villager. So if if your villager uh, hotkey is Q, um, then that that's okay. So I'll show you exactly what I mean by that because then you can just press F1 Q, F1 Q, F1 Q, F1 Q, F1 Q, and you can train a lot of villagers that way. 65 Raiders coming in from Noosh. Welcome, fellas. We're just doing a little bit of coaching at the moment. Noosh, I know you can always use with a bit of coaching, mate. So thank you very much for coming in with the raid. Um, so I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what I mean. So a whole lot of love. Speed always wins. All right, so we'll drop down some TCs. Oh, those aren't TCs. And and is the hot key for TC with the Dutch. Interesting. All right, so um, I'll turn Speedaway's wins off. So I, I would have all five selected and then I'll just be like out here and about and then 5Q and it just trains three settlers in one click. But if you want to go like F1, F1, Q, F... Oh gosh, I don't know what I just did. I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay, F1, Q, F1, Q, F1, Q. That's fine as well. It's just important that Hello? if you're going to do it, like try and do it quickly. Like just go like that because like like this i can select the uh, three different waypoints yeah like if if, 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 if you want to do that if you got it all, all spread out yeah. if you select them all at the same time and then you need to make one waypoint for each if you don't own it. Uh, i mean it's got its positives okay. and it's got its negatives like as an example let's say you're over here Hello? fighting what i can do is i can just press five q and still be yeah. watching the fight yeah, yeah. over here without going back to the town center to train a villager every single time and then going back over to the fire. So it allows me to keep my attention where where I need it. Uh, so that, that's why I prefer to keep them in a control group as well. But then, I mean, then you're losing a control group that's in, within reach and ideally you don't want to be using your town center on that. So yeah, I mean, there's a number of different schools of thought, but that's essentially it. Okay. All right. Did you have any other questions or anything else that you wanted to talk about? No. No, no, I, I think if I uh, I can, e I need to practice this and then we can move to the next step. Uh, I, I agree 100%. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure coaching you. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that uh, that we're going to see a, a steep rise in your ELO as well as your skill. Uh, I, I can definitely see that your APM is already there, so that's exciting for me. I'm really excited to see where it goes. Thanks to you. Thanks to, for taking the time. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you next time. See you next time. All right. Thanks, bye. Bye. bye.